You know, a lot of people look at organizations in two ways, and this may be somewhat of a simpli simplification, but you know, some people view organizations as a machine. They're mechanistic. They're very predictable. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they perform exactly as they've been programmed to do, to, to perform. Others view organizations as complex adaptive systems. And I think that, Sharon, that's how you view organizations. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. Complex adaptive systems are or organizations or systems that are just as it's described. They're complex, meaning that they have many parts, many components, and each of those components have an impact on the other components in the system. So when you're working in a complex adaptive system and you're actually making even a positive change in, a, in some way that the organization wants to have it done, it has a ripple effect into other parts of the system. So you have to be aware that even the smallest and even the most positive change has long-term or possible changes throughout the system that you have to pay attention to the impact and the degree of impact so that you do not set something that's on a positive trajectory in the organization off course by making a small change somewhere else in the system. So complex adaptive systems are called that because the system is always trying to get back to a state of equilibrium. Any time that there's an external event that causes a change or a movement in an organization or the organization itself wants to make a change, it creates disequilibrium, means that business is not conducted as usual. And organizations, and particularly complex adaptive systems, are always trying to get back to a state of equilibrium. So as a technical assistance provider or as a change agent, you have to be aware of that because where you're working is not the only place that's impacted by your work in a complex adaptive system. Would you say that this approach to thinking about organizations, particularly within the educational context, is this common? The approach to... To thinking of organizations in this way. Is this something that educators are thinking about and talking about, would you say? I think they are. As just Janine said, that um, educators are becoming more and more aware of the holistic view or a systemic mm -hmm. view of education, that it's not a matter of just fixing one particular issue or instituting a new strategy in one piece of the uh, instructional process, for example, that it's really a whole systemic approach. You have to look at the environment in which the organization is operating, as well as all of the layers of work that's going on and the tasks themselves that are being completed. So education is being looked at and it's looking at itself in a more holistic way. So more so than probably in the last 15 to 20 years, this is beginning to evolve now as a way to look at resolving problems and, and growing organizations and improving in performance within them. One of the things we're going to be talking about uh, are some very specific things that the ARC is doing or, or will be doing um, that, that utilizes this model um, within our region. But one of the things that, that was helpful for me uh, as I became acquainted with your model, uh, Sharon, was to uh, think about it the way you presented it, and that was um, in making biscuits. <laughs> Could you share how bis making biscuits relates to sure. <laughs> capacity building? Sure. <laughs> the the uh, example that I gave was of a person who, um, and this is an actual example of a person who for years had been baking biscuits and loved to eat biscuits and wanted to improve the biscuits that the individual was making, but had tampered with all kinds of changes in recipes and processes to try to improve both the height and the taste and the quality of the biscuits and was not able to make the kinds of changes that they wanted until someone told them and showed them how when you bake the biscuits or the dough and you cut it out and you put it in the pan, you need to touch the sides of the biscuits together before they're baked, which will allow them to rise higher. And that was the example that I gave was that it took someone guiding that individual or demonstrating or showing or mentoring or giving them the information that had been missing all along in all the work that they had been doing that actually made a qualitative difference. And the same is true in organizations. Oftentimes organizations will have issues or problems that they are aware that are occurring in the organization, but they don't know exactly what else to do, or they may not know the right formula or the process that would allow that to, to have a, a significant change in the way they were doing their operations. So capacity building and technical assistance is very valuable, just like the biscuit story, in providing maybe a technique, a piece of information, or a skill that would change qualitatively the end result of the work.
Had you heard this story before, Janine? <laughs> I had not. It's interesting. But, uh, but that's true because uh, just one little nugget of knowledge that someone else might have might make the difference. And in that case, it was just touching the sides, and I have to remember that, too. <laughs> <laughs> it really is a good, a good analogy. I found it helpful.